Hi everyone, my name is Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com and so I was just sitting here in my studio and I thought maybe I would record another podca podcast episode. So that's what I decided to do. Got on my um, studio clothes, <laughs> which I'm sure you've seen me in many times, including my 1993 t-shirt. Because <laughs> you know, there's just no reason to mess up decent clothes. So anyway, yeah, so um, I've been asked this question a number of times. And that is how did how to get creative get started? And what is it? And so I thought, oh, all right, we'll just use that as um, we'll just use that as this jumping off point for this episode of this podcast. And the podcast is just about it's just kind of an informal time of get, letting you get to know me a little bit more, you know, free from streaming or classes or what have you. So anyway, we're just going to get get into it. So I've been a creative person all of my life. My very, very earliest memories are being creative as a little kid. I was the tail end of a bunch of kids and um, the next one to me was eight years older than me. So I was kind of on my own a lot, which was a, a big advantage because I got to entertain myself. And um, so I taught myself how to do lots of things. And I was an avid reader, loved to read books and magazines and um, all kinds of, you know, whatever I could get my hands on as a little kid. And because of that, it sparked an interest that has stayed with me my whole life. And that is loving to, two things, loving to learn and loving to make things. <clears throat> And the third thing is loving to share it with other people. So really, those are the three, I'd say the three main components in my my artistic journey. So when I was little, I, I loved dolls, always loved dolls. Um, they were my they were my world there. They are how I learned to sew because I learned to sew making clothes for them and all that kind of stuff. And I loved getting a doll every year for Christmas. That was just like, oh, this big highlight of my life. And I looked forward to that every single year until one, one year my mom told me I was too old for dolls. And I'm like, oh, because <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know you could get too old to have a doll. And but that really that really stuck with me a lot. And so I didn't receive any more dolls, and although I kept all the dolls I had, I never did anything with them pretty much after that. And when I was an adult and I married and had children of my own, I was kind of going through a spell of, you know, although I'd done lots of different creative kinds of things, including sewing and tailoring and teaching sewing, and I taught piano lessons for a long time, and I taught decorative painting for a long time. I mean, I, I learned and taught many different kinds of things. And, but I guess I was, I must have been at kind of an impasse or something. And I was looking for something new to do, something that uh, new to learn, new to, you know, just be invigorated by. And I happened upon someone who was an adult female who was making dolls. And then I started seeing other people who were making dolls, male and female people <clears throat> who were making dolls of, you know, all different kinds of things from baby dolls to art dolls to sculptural dolls to um, all different kinds of things. Anyway, I thought, really? Hmm. So I started looking into that and realized that, um, yeah, <laughs> it was legal to play with dolls again. It never had been not legal, but I didn't know it was legal. So anyway, <clears throat> one thing led to another. And I got involved with a group of people and we started doing some exchanges, you know, sending dolls to each other and that kind of thing. And so one of the dolls that I created was this one. This was one of the first dolls that I did that was my own, she was like my own design. And her name is Harriet and she was called Harriet's Heart because you can see she's holding a heart in her hands. And... Um, she has on fishnet stockings and 
She's real tall and lanky, kind of like a, a flapper style doll. Anyway, I had people who really liked her and they said, oh, you should make a pattern. And it's like, well, I'm not sure how to do that, but I think I'll give it a stab. And so I did. And so I made Harriet, Harriet's heart. And she's had many, many different renditions through the years because of the, the, the way she's created. <clears throat> she can be styled in lots of different poses and so forth. And so she was, she was a lot of fun. And I started selling that pattern. <clears throat> and so then there was this incident um, where there was a school shooting. And this was back at a point in time where um, a school shooting was a very uncommon thing to have happen. And it had a huge impact on me back at that point in time. And so to process the way I was feeling, I made another doll. And her name was Hannah. And she's holding a whole armload of doll of hearts. And one of them, I know you can't see it very well, but one of them is broken and then stitched back together. And so Hannah, because she's very simple, <coughs> excuse the voice, <coughs> um, talking a lot today. Uh, because Hannah was um, such a simple, basic shape, she is the perfect canvas to make her anything that the the maker wanted to do with her. And so she's meant to hang on the wall. And Hannah has become lots of different um, ways of putting her together. So here's another one. And she can hold a variety of things in her hands, or there's a lot of different things you can do with her. So anyway, this is another one. And so this is all Hannah. And so the name, I turned her into a pattern, and she was called Hannah's Heart. So we had Harriet's Heart and Hannah's Heart. And so, of course, it seems like there should be a third one. And so that's where Hillary came from. So this is Hillary's Heart. And Hillary hangs up. So she's kind of a mobile kind of doll. She's meant to hang up, but she has a heart in her hands as well. So that's Hillary's heart. So these were all three my original doll patterns. And I started teaching doll making, and people really struggled with the faces. And so one of the ways that I um, began teaching people how to do faces, a very I taught them in a very simple way. And one of the ways that I did that was by creating uh, rubber stamps that went with each face. So this is Hillary's face. And this is Harriet's face. So these are rubber stamps that we had out for a long time. These are no longer produced in this current um, fashion simply because we ran out. And then this is Hannah's face. And Hannah's face... The one here is is drawn, not stamped, but there is the stamp that became her face. So anyway, so the rubber stamps we sold for a long time, and I used those to teach people how to do faces in <clears throat> a more simple manner. And then I had one more, you know, I had one more face because of the way that, that we were putting them together. And so I designed a doll to go with the face. I wanted an, uh, a face with a lot of character and so forth. And so this is Odie Byrne. And so this is the Odie Byrne doll. And she's a seated doll. This is the Odie Byrne face, the stamp. See, whoops. Hold on, Odie Byrne. So you can see the stamp that became her face. And there's a, and she was a pattern also. And so there's a story behind Odie Byrne, and that is that she was she went to the hairdresser. She was celebrating a special uh, occasion, a special birthday. She went to the hairdresser, and she came home with a cake on her head. Well, she went to she went to get her hair frosted. <laughs> I can't even remember my own story. She went to get her hair frosted and came home with a cake on her head. So I don't know whether you can tell, but she has candles. There, this doll is so old that the candles are broken and everything else. But anyway. And she's so old that her um, her clothing is 
didn't hold up over time. It's a some sort of pleather, and it's not holding up over time. But anyway, that's Odie Byrne. She was she was quite the stylish thing in her in her day. <laughs> that's Odie Byrne. So all of those were doll patterns. This is another one, um, and we may reproduce these again at some point. This was all done prior to digital anything digital. There was no video. So YouTube didn't exist. Um, digital photography didn't exist. And so everything that I did was produced um, in the most painstaking manner possible. This is another pattern that I did. This is, um, he was called the Trinkets and Treasures Santa. His beard is all done with beads and buttons and so forth and treasures. And, and um, apparently I thought that there was, and he has a garment with a hood, Apparently, I was afraid that he would blow away in a tornado because he is so heavy. He's a stump doll. He's so heavy, I can barely lift him. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what I was thinking when I designed him, but I like him nonetheless. So anyway, from, uh, from the dolls, fast forward, and um, it, right at the tail end of when my pattern business was going really well, um, my parents were, they had me late in life and they needed to be cared for. And so my life kind of got set to the side as I became an active caregiver. And um, that took a few years, <laughs> took a few years out of my life. And then it took a few more years to kind of get my feet back under me again. And during that time where I was having a, a pretty rough, honestly, I was having a rough time getting my traction and getting my feet under me and um, just trying to regain some sort of who was I kind of, you know, who, who am I now? Because I've been this all encompassing caregiver and and things didn't go well toward the end of that and I was like you know trying to so I took a, a massive psychological hit and I was trying to figure out how to um, you know kind of get my feet back under me and my son knew that I was a journaler and I had always been a journaler uh, well I won't say always but from the time I was um, probably in college or a little bit later, I had started journaling as in writing. And I filled many dozens of um, books of journaling. And uh, I loved blank books. I love composition notebooks. And I, I would write just, you know, stream of consciousness kinds of, of um, you know, spill your guts kind of journaling. <laughs> I pity the poor soul that ever runs onto that collection. Anyway, they're going to think, this person was totally crazy. And they're probably right, but nevertheless. Anyway, my son knew that I was journaling because I had to have journals to take care, track things about my parents and stuff about myself and blah, 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 blah. And so he suggested one day that perhaps it would be good if I took those journals and I used those to turn it into the story or a story that was about a family caregiver and so that's what I did and so this became um, this is the result of the journaling and this is the result of um, a bazillion hours <laughs> of translating scribbles of journals into the story that centered around my caregiving experience so once I got the the um, manuscript done then my son said, well, I think maybe you should just um, sit down and, and maybe draw some some illustrations that we could use in the book. You know, a few. And so I did. And so what you're going to see here throughout the book is um, they're all black and white. And some of them are... Some of them are um, uplifting and some of them, many of them are very... Um, you know, sort of gut wrenching, and uh, but all of them are honest, and they are very honest with where was I, and what was I doing, and what was going on. This is a 
you probably can't see it very well but this is a whole pile of art supplies and fabric and so forth and so I just I just illustrated I just drew whatever you know whatever seemed to fit they're all black and white as I said and one of my friends who had a copy of this book took uh, she took the book and she took colored pencils and colored in all the images which I thought was such a great idea I mean just such a great idea to do that so anyway just showing you some of them so the book is illustrated throughout with um, with images that are based around the the text and the whatever was going on in the story so that's just a few of them so we got that all done got the book printed you know which you know you can see it's a big thick book it's large it's not super large print but it's large enough that it's easy to read um and it was i got all that done and it was a very cathartic very healing kind of experience and i'm thinking oh yay we're done <clears throat> and even the image on the front cover i did this is done out of uh colored pencil and i don't know watercolor i think or something i don't know it's been too long ago anyway um so it was all done and i was thinking oh this is great it's all finished and my son calls me and he says and he said well we want to turn this into an audio book now like okay cool well he's in the entertainment industry and i'm thinking he'll do the book and he oh no 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 he wanted me to uh, to do the book the audio version so um we did and and so uh yeah that took several months and he directed and produced it and he was um very patient with me because it's one thing to live the story and write the story and do the images for the story. It's a whole other thing to say the words out loud <laughs> in this from the story. And I am not a professional actor, and so it was um, it was a challenge. Anyway, from that came the audio version of the book. This is the CD version. It is six, the CD version is six CDs, six audio CDs. It is an unabridged version of the book, but there's six CDs. Also, there, this is done in, uh, we did it on, it's available on audible.com. This is available at Amazon. The CDs you have to get from me, so you have to get those from the website, um, how to get creative in the shop. And the, the music that's on here is all original music by my son. So it truly was for, for my family a labor of love to share and encourage other care, family caregivers. And along the way, it provided a space for me to kind of put a, an end to a very long um, and difficult um several years and so anyway that was where that came from so as a result of that um let's see what happened next i uh, i kind of regained my traction with my doll making and so i started going back and making dolls again and there was a um about the time that everything had kind of gone upside down in my life, I had written a book called Creating Faces about a spe specific technique in doll making. And after all this stuff happened, we took the book and we completely redid it. And so that's where this came from. The original one was all in black and white photography. This one is all stepped out in color photographs. There's four different heads in this one. And they have names. Let's see if I can find them. Because um, there's an introduction about each one of the characters in here. There's Nosy, Drowsy, Sneaky, and Cutie. And they're, they're, they build on each other so that you can learn how to do this technique where you take, instead of have a, a flat face, you have a three-dimensional face, a contoured face. And then there are also the step-by-step photographs for how to color the faces 
anyway, so we completely redid that. And this is also available on, on Amazon. Or if you become a member, a VIP member at How to Get Creative, this comes with a, um, a, an ebook of this comes with the membership. So anyway, there's various ways to get it. If you want it printed, you have to go to Amazon to get it printed. Anyway, so we did that. So that was my second book. And I'll go into more detail about some of that stuff in a different episode, a different podcast. But as we moved forward, I started doing, um, I was kind of in a space of I need to, I need to do more um, sharing or something, you know, I was trying to, I'd always taught something somewhere and I was trying to figure out how to do that. And I happened across people online. At that point, I, I was new to YouTube. I didn't even know exactly what it was. And I found some people, ran into some people that were streaming online live. And it wasn't YouTube at that point. It was on Ustream. And I thought, I wonder if I could do that. And so I bought a camera and I plugged it into my laptop and I started streaming and kind of got my feet wet with the whole concept of streaming and talking to a camera and, and t talking while I was creating and that kind of stuff. And um, I was just doing it for fun, you know. And my son somehow found that I was doing that. And so he started, he decided that maybe it was something worth pursuing. And so he, we started talking about it and he said, I think you should should really explore this and so I started doing a little more and a little more and we ran a sample on a, did a sample online course and that went okay and so then we tried something else and that was okay and it was just like one thing led to another and how to get creative was kind of rumbling in the backs of of our minds particularly in his mind so this is one of the things that I did when I was streaming in those early days of streaming this happened to be a kit that um, I'd had for years and years. And I took the kit and then, you know, revamped it and made it my own. And um, so the pieces were wood, so they're painted. His face is painted. He's kind of a Father Christmas style um, guy. His The fabric for his pants is all printed on the jelly plate. So that's all jelly plate printed. And then I put him together and he sits. You know, he's kind of a funny looking old guy, but he was one of the things that I streamed early back in the, when I was just getting going. And so we started talking about how to get creative and we named it. And, um, and then I started recording classes and we named categories of all the things I was interested in. And so that's why we have this broad range of things on the website. And so we have everything from paper to art journaling to art supplies, sewing, needle sculpting, doll making. Um, I, you know, it just goes on and on. And jewel, simple jewelry making and things like that. So it's a broad, broad variety of subjects because that's what I like. <laughs> that's me. I like to learn all different kinds of things. And, and I love to share what I learn with other people. So the, the first 12 classes that we had, that we are my favorite 12. Actually, it's my favorite 12 of the original, all the original stuff I did, we put on YouTube. So there are 12 original classes on YouTube for free that anybody can watch right here on my channel. And that includes paste paper and locker hooking and um, art journaling and just in introduction to scissors and, you know, stuff like that. There's 12 classes there. And then I began recording more and more classes for the website. And we came out with, uh, well, here's one of the classes. I'll show you. This is, um, this is one of the classes. She's a simple, a simple doll technique. People love her hair. And um, her face is the Hannah stamp. So I'll show you. So 
So there is the stamp for her face. And so she is a class on the website, a two-part class on the website. And then I began exploring the concept of the muse because the, my muse, I mean, my muse was dried up and, and she, she dried up and blew away at one point in time. And so I, we created a course that was named Mining Your Muse. And it, although it uses forms and dolls, if you will, it's really about mining, finding that, that cre creative traction again. And so here are some of the, the forms from that, that course. So this is one. Here's another. Most of the, almost all of the classes in the Mining Your Muse course involve using a sewing machine. I think there's one, is there one, one or two that, that don't. This one, the body can be hand stitched. Um, anyway, so these are just some of the, the forms. But everyone that goes through that course comes out with different muses because it depends on where they are and what's going on in their lives, how those muses express themselves. So anyway, that's a whole course. That's different from the, um, the regular classes at how to get creative. And then we have um, the VIP class. They get a class every month that's a private class for them. This was one of the classes. She's called the um, Miss Finkel. She's a pincushion doll. And not everything is is dolls, but there are there's an assortment of dolls because that the figure is so important to me and my artistic development. Well, as I said, journaling was a big deal for me, and through my uh, exploration online and stuff, I kept hearing about art journaling. I didn't know what it was. I assumed it was something that wasn't for me. Because art journaling, you must, you must have to be an artist to do art journaling. And I don't know, I just, one day I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to have to try this and see how it goes. Well, I bought a book, or maybe I had it on hand, I don't even remember. But I bought this book, or had it, and I thought, well, I'll just start. Because a book's a book, right? Well, this is a sketchbook. <laughs> and this was definitely not the right kind of paper. To work with because as you will see when I lift it up here you see how it's pulling apart it's not the right kind of paper for all the stuff I was doing on it and you know it was a terrible choice of paper I've learned a lot since those days which was years and years ago but this is still one of my very favorite journals and this is my book of positive words and so like those are all the a words and so i still add to this sometimes when i find a new word that i really like i'll add it to i'll go oh that's a good a word so i'll stick it in my a page and the b words and the c words so here are the c words so that's as far as i'll go but just so you can see and i look at it even today and i see things like the word coffee and I think, oh, yeah, you know, that that's something my husband and I still do to this day. Every afternoon, we either go for coffee or tea, and it's how we stay connected to each other. We spend time, you know, just connecting and being together. It's just been a super important part of my life. And so it, this is really about, it's about words as much as the learning the techniques and expressing myself artistically. It's a lot about the words. So that was one of my very first journals, art journals. And so then I moved on and I moved into um, <clears throat> a Strathmore <clears throat> mixed media journal. So the paper was much better for taking all, you know, all the stuff that I would throw at the paper. And <clears throat> still a lot of, um, a lot of color. And, I'll, and always words. I almost always include words with whatever it is that I'm doing. And sometimes, like um, this one in this page, there is a whole page of writing underneath that. And then I did the art stuff on the top of it. Uh, sometimes I'll art journal because I want to, in the case of this one, 
I wanted to remember whatever was written on this tag, and so I did an art journal page about it because then I, it sticks with me longer. Because uh, I think in pictures. And there's another one here that I really like. And um, if I can find it. Sometimes, sometimes the page is more about the words than anything else. And that's what there it is there. Uh, sometimes I, I play around with the technique for a class. That's what's happening on this page. So it's not even about making a page. It's about exploring a technique. And this one, this is one of my favorite pages that I've ever done. Because what it says is <clears throat> the first law of holes. When you're in one, stop digging. <laughs> I like that. It's a good reminder. Uh, so this, it's just all different kinds of, of, um, different kinds of art supplies and techniques and ways of lettering and so forth. So that, that book is, it's close to complete, maybe not all the way. Some of my other art journals include things like very personal pages that are more scrapbook-like, have a more scrapbook-like quality to them. Uh, sometimes they're pretty raw. Sometimes there's a lot of... Um, looking for this page to show you sometimes there there is you know it's a lot more about exploring words um, concepts feelings that kind of thing sometimes it's just making a mess on a page you know but and and other times it's testing out um, it's testing out a technique so I was playing around with some simple silk screens that I'd made. Um, here is where I was using a spirograph and making a flower garden out of spirograph. That one doesn't have any words on it. Very unusual for me. So that's another kind of art journal. And then I realized at some point when I was kind of um, getting my feet back under me, I started drawing these circular things and I didn't know I didn't know they had a name. <laughs> I just thought they were pretty. It was just like a, a pretty design, you know, and I thought, oh, these are so cool to draw. And then I found out they had a name. I had no idea that they had a name. And they are uh, they're called mandalas or mandalas, however you would like to pronounce it. It makes absolutely no difference to me how anybody says it. <laughs> I call it mandala because it's easier for me to say. Anyway, I started drawing them, and um, and so I have drawn them, and I've cut them out and mounted them in this black square journal because I like the way that they look. So these are just a few of the many dozens of mandalas that I've drawn and all different kinds of ways and color combinations and sizes and experiments and um, it, it's an art form that I'm absolutely in love with and every time I think well that's probably all I don't probably will just start repeating now right and no matter what there's always more you know there's just always more I don't know where they come from. They just, but they just, I start and they show up. And so those are all different kinds of mandalas. Each of these was made into, um, I made these into greeting cards. So, and then sometimes when I didn't know what else to do, I made books out of them. So this is a mandala. And then I cut it in half and put pages inside of it, and so it's a book, like that. Well, a lot of people were interested in that whole concept of mandalas, and so we wrote, I wrote another course that we published called Mandala Madness, that's also located at, um, 
on the website at how to get creative. And here's a couple of, of the uh, mandalas from that course. So you learn how to do a whole bunch of different mandalas. These are all hand drawn. This is on, this is mounted on a canvas. And the bonus class for that course is um, is one even done in fabric. So there's all different kinds of mandalas for the Mandala Madness course. And then we decided that it was good if we took the designs in case people didn't want to draw them, they just wanted to have them. We took the a lot of the mandalas that from the, some of those that I showed you and we drew them um, so that you could color them yourself. And in this book, which is Mandala Melange version 2.0, because there was a, an original Mandala Melange, uh, in 2.0 it has 30 designs where the original book had 25 so this one has 30 designs in it this is an ebook and then we had so many that we created mandala medley so this is another 25 designs so there's one I know they're a little hard to see with the light but it'll give you an idea I'll show you a couple and so there's another 25 designs in that. That's also an ebook. And then we have one ebook that's free. There are five free designs in it, and it is called Mandala Madness. And Mandala Madness is, um, I'll show you one of the designs from that. So this is a free ebook. So you can download this one for free. And then there's some other cool things coming down the road from Mandala Madness. And um, so that was our our most current thing that we've been doing. And I'm just looking around to see what else I have. I think that's kind of it. That's kind of the overview of kind of where we were, you know, where it kind of all started and this evolution over time and kind of where we are at the moment. We're, we're developing products. And so those are all in various stages of production and release. And um, I spend a lot of time creating. I love creating, I love teaching, and how to get creative is something that I would do whether I had a website or not. I would I would be expressing myself in all these different kinds of, of creative avenues. And I love it. I love it because it, it um, gives me insight into myself and it allows me to create something that stays done. <laughs> Unlike housework, which as soon as you do it, you have to start thinking about doing it again, if you know what I mean. So um, I'm just looking, I don't see anything else I have to show you. And so that's kind of how it all started. And I, if you have any questions, you can stick them in the comment section below the video. So other than that, that's how how to get creative came into being so thank you so much for watching and um i'll be back with another episode at some point when i think of something else to talk about and uh so if you've watched all the way to the end <laughs> of this almost 39 minute video um thanks for hanging out with me thanks for being in my studio with me remember to get creative today because you know it's easy and i'll see you again soon <laughs>